Mark Watts, LeadFDS.com. I'm here on the campus of Urbana University, and today we're going to talk about pre-workout circuits to get your athletes prepared for the training session and to get the most out of your time that you have with them. Uh, this is part of our uh, Sports Performance Coach Education Series, uh, so we'll get right to it. Um, all right, so one of the things that we've done uh, in the past, and I tell you what, I didn't really figure this out uh, till the end, till that last couple years that I was coaching. Uh, I wish I would have figured this out a little bit earlier, but uh, what happened is that pre-workout time, when the athletes report to their training sessions, to give them enough time uh, to get prepared for the workout, to get the most use out of that time, and to still keep them engaged in understanding what they're doing is going to have an effect for the rest of the day and it's going to have an effect uh, for the rest of their training cycle. Um, we spend a lot of time, athletes come in, as soon as they get there they start to foam roll, they're laying on the ground, then they do a ground based warm up, we're just laying on the ground or you pick different uh, you know, agility ladders because you know, people think they're cool. Um, and what we did was we wanted to just have a little bit more purpose. So we ended up doing is we started to, to mix these up uh, and just have three pre-lift circuits for lack of better words, you can call them whatever you want, but basically by the time we got through those three movement circuits uh, we were able to get after our uh, our assignment so uh, you know reactive method just meaning in the terms of what Louis Sims had said that's any of our explosive movement type stuff uh, whether it be speed explosive power whatever we're doing Olympic lifts that went in that category our emphasis stuff and then you know with our force training and then then our commitments at the end so we're talking about these first three uh, first uh, first and foremost so uh, moving on so we look at the pre-training circuits, there are a couple benefits. Number one, um, they're going to have an acute and accumulative training effect. So working through ankle mobility will help me catch the clean, but in the long term, it's probably going to help me on the field as well. The same thing anytime you're doing, regardless of activity, it should have an acute effect. So if you have the, have, have the activity, it should affect, positively affect the athlete's workout for that day and build over time should help that athlete's performance on the field or court. That's, that's the main thing. Um, there were equipment based. So what happens is a lot of times if you're doing uh, you know, posterior shoulder girdle with, with bands and then you're doing uh, some kind of ACL prevention using, using another piece of equipment, or if you're, you're, you're moving the athletes around the weight room doing different, uh, di using different pieces of equipment, number one, it shortens the amount of time that you have to train because they're constantly moving around the room. Um, secondly, uh, it, again, it really stresses and stretches uh, the availability of your equipment. You only have so many uh, med balls, so many foam rollers, so many bands. So it's one of, for a lot of coaches, that can be an issue. Second thing is, again, uh, they're, they can be combined and it can be interchangeable. So again, with the first we're going to talk about, you don't have to do them in that specific order. You can kind of min or mix those uh, so they can, and again, once you get the athletes understanding what they're doing and you keep them uh, keep them engaged in the activity, you can interchange some of those and really kind of almost have a circuit, a larger circuit within those three themselves. Uh, the order is interchangeable and again the athletes have some a little bit of autonomy, especially if you give them a, a template. You give them a, hey this is, we're going to address this component of our, of our pre-training session uh, time and the athletes have a little bit of a choice on how they can go and, 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 and approach that. So sometimes that gives them, empowers them, and it, it really helps in the overall uh, leadership development and accountability of, of the team. Uh, lastly, again, they, they basically the rotation, and even if they don't hit all those different components, and again, if you're working on, uh, for example, posterior shoulder girdle, and then you're using bands, so uh, you're addressing a lot of the scapular retraction, uh, external rotation, the next time they go through and they're maybe using a, a circuit with uh, some kind of stability ball, you're going to address that, maybe that, that stability component uh, in that shoulder area. Uh, and again, as long as you're rotating those through, you have a system that they're able to hit those checkpoints, I think it's, it can be a positive thing. So moving on, and we're going to talk about each one of these, so I'll go as briefly as I can. Um, with these to still get you an idea of what we're talking about. So again, this is going to be circle one. This is our soft tissue work. Now, whether you believe in soft tissue work, whether you believe in, you know, wor worried about uh, tissue quality, uh, that's up to you. That's, that's something that, uh, that that's, that's between you and your philosophy and what you want to do. But this is the way we broke it down. Again, uh, we had foam rollers or PVC pipes. 
We also had med balls or softballs, peanuts, any kind of like ball type. Uh, sometimes we use the peanuts with two lacrosse balls, sometimes two tennis balls, and we would just get those from the, from the sport coaches. And the last thing, we would have barbells. The barbells are already set up in the rack, depending on the day, uh, so we'd actually try to utilize those. So, and again, we're not doing all these components just on a foam roller. So we'd split those up. So for lower body and upper body, and again, we would just address components. I'm not saying that addressing these different body parts with this particular implement is the best, but that's the way we just broke it down. Again, working our way backwards for a barbell, again, we would just get in a bottom position, rest that barbell on their thighs, and really work that ankle mobility as they're really just trying to work that, that, that tissue of the quads. And then again, when it's in the rack, we would just get up underneath there, and again, worry about traps, we would worry about our triceps, and try, try to foam roll those areas you know, roll those areas as well. Um, and again, with the, with the med ball or softball, we would end up addressing some different, again, the glutes, um, so as different areas, and again, really with the pecs and the T-spine as well with some of those. So, and, and, and then we would leave some of the major components lower body-wise with the foam rollers, lats and T-spine with the foam rollers, and then we're working just, you know, IT band is a big one, adductor, some things that just a little bit better to have a, a longer surface area uh, for those. The good thing about it is that, again, we would be able, if we, had a, if we had a group of 25, 30, you know, some days we'd have up to 50 athletes, you know, we could get away with having 20 foam rollers. Uh, because again, only a third of those athletes were working on that. So you can have some kind of rotation with that. So I would just make sure that you have it set up. You have foam rolls in one area, uh, any kind of uh, med balls, softballs, peanuts, lacrosse balls, whatever in one area. And then you can still have a third of your group in the weight room actually doing some soft tissue work in that area. So um, moving on, circuit two was all the mobility. And again, uh, whatever you want to call it, movement prep, prehab, mobility, dynamic flexibility, whatever it may be. And I must say, this is a circuit we, after 15 years, thought that this was the best in our situation. So we end up having so that, again, with that, um, we would have the athletes, we would have hurdles set up high-low, and they would just go through. We would narrow it down to one particular, um, one particular drill, and really would be a, um, a lateral step over with bent leg and we would have basically a lateral step under and rotate the lunge making sure we're bringing that you know extending that t-spine so they hit the turtle behind us and working through we're going to work on some exercise index videos for that but you know for 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 that point, if we have we had about five hurdles set up, you can have more than that. The athletes go through. As soon as they go through those hurdles, now they're looking for work. Sorry. Now they're looking for, again, they're going to address one of these components. So again, and really, no matter what athlete you're working at, whether they're just you know, into uh, what, strength sports or field sports, whatever it may be, when you look at it, if you look at you know, the, the joint by joint approach, when you look at um, ankle mobility, hip mobility, T-spine mobility, those are the three components that really are crucial to just about any athlete. And I'm not saying that some sports require that more than others, but you know, really, if you can address those three, you're really covering your bases for the most part. Um, so with ankle mobility, we would just basically get, do that again. They're just using that against a wall or a plate. Sometimes we'd even use the bands. If we already had the bands set up, they could do their ankle mobility on the bands. Anytime you could change the workout out like that, I think it, it helps it because, again, it keeps them engaged. And it gives them some more skill sets uh, as they're, if they're training in another facility that um, you know, doesn't have bands. They can just use a wall for that. Um, and, again, every time they would go through the hurdles and then go ahead and look for work. That way you don't have a big, long line waiting for any one piece of equipment. They go through the hurdle. There shouldn't be a line at the hurdles, and there shouldn't be a line at the implement. So, again, the next thing would be T-spine mobility. We would just use a bench uh, with elbows on the bench, working on a T-spine. We use bands. Uh, and again, that's kind of up to you. And, again, we'll continue to uh, try to get some exercise videos on there as well for those. Last one would be a, a second, second last one would be a sleeper stretch. Um, you know, and really that was just a lot of for shoulders. Again, sometimes we would just get, if we didn't want to do a sleeper stretch, and if they're not overhead athletes and they didn't have discrepancies unilaterally, sometimes they would just use that time uh, to get into that front rack position if we had cleans that day. Uh, you know, the behind the head uh, front rack position uh, as well, or a snatch position where, you know, we're just working on that shoulder mobility um, as well. So T-spine mobility and really getting those shoulders into the position where uh, they can, they can uh, and again, if we have an athlete that need it, 
sometimes we would just do some kind of shoulder stability, it may whether it be um, you know, scapular uh, push-ups on a stability ball, but that was the time to address that. And then the last thing was a couch stretch progression. Uh, again, this is you know, just for, for hip flexors because again, we had so many athletes with that anterior pelvic tilt. It was really important for us to address that. And again, even if it was, if we're doing some, some soft tissue work with it, combined with a static stretch of that area, and again, uh, the couch stretch was our kind of go-to, but again, there's a lot of other you know you can do some of the uh, some of the the, the the traction with the bands with the hip flexors as well and again that's one of those things then we can move that station into the weight room and have those bands around the rack and they can do that as well so you kind of get the point that is what we end up after 15 years thought that this was the most efficient use of time so the third circuit and again doesn't have to be third is going to be there's going to be two slides for this this is kind of our movement prep our prehab prehab um, you know, just basically getting the body prepared, and we broke it down into four areas. Not saying this is all inclusive, not saying that these fit in every category perfectly, but what we thought was if we had four movement components and we really broke it down to um, five different pieces of implement, five different implements. So again, manual resistance, we use mini bands, lighter average bands, the blast strap or some kind of sled strap that we just hang up. Um, you know, you could use anything, anything in that area. And then obviously stability ball as well. So with those areas, what we had thought was that we can have the athlete address all those, those four components, which really are neck for most of the combat, collision sports, um, and again, for me, I think there's a lot of sports that, that, that can use more neck. I do think coaches have shied away from it for whatever reason. Um, you know, obviously, a posterior shoulder girdle would be, would be huge. That works in with the T-spine mobility. Um, lower body, which we basically go through um, hips and also working on that vastus medialis um, would be the other part. And then some kind of a torso. Really, the torso stuff would be anti-rotation, anti anti-extension was the bulk of that torso uh, with some stabilization as well. So again, if you have, now you can break up your group into five different different athletes. They can just get one of these a day, maybe address two of them. Maybe you do one at the beginning of the training session, one at the end. Uh, that is going to be up to you. But really what we thought was, again, for, you know, for an example, uh, for a, for a um, you know, for, for a, a light or average band. And again, we would have them set up on the J hooks and the rack, and they would just do basically the protrusion and, re, and, and uh, retraction. And as long as they rotate, then they're going to be able just with neck to be able to, they're hitting all five ways, uh, five ways, all ways except for retraction for, for the man of resistance. You know, they're just doing, if we had a harness with the mini band, they're just doing extension with that. Um, they're doing some, some static protrusion and they're doing some side flexion. As long as they're rotating through, I'm not saying that all five components, all five movements aren't essential, but we were able to divvy those up throughout a training week. And again, that depends on how many days you're training those athletes as well. Um, so again, same thing with the posterior shoulder girdle if you're looking. Uh, again, uh, you know, manual resistance could be either, you know, uh, lateral side raise or some kind of face pull pull aparts when the band snatch, face pulls, because again, now these light bands are actually hung up in a rack, uh, and then you can go through uh, external rotation, stronger presses, scarecrows if you're using the straps, and then scapular push-ups with the stability ball. So those are the things that, that, that you can see. And again, I'm glad that uh, you can see the board and not my face, because that's just, that's just, just good for the overall presentation. Uh, to be honest with you. And again, the second part of that, sorry, this part, top part is blurry, uh, but again, now we're looking at anti-rotation, anti-flexion. So again, same thing, man resistance, mini band, light band, sled, or sled strap, and then that stability ball. So as you can see, we're, sometimes we're gonna hit a pal off press, sometimes we're gonna actually do some kind of flexion, which to us, it leads to anti-extension, um, fallouts, rollouts, and then some kind of planks as well. That last part being basically that, um, you know, posterior chain VMO. So we did a lot of things with, uh, you know, basically abduction with the amount of female athletes we had with knee valgus internal rotation. We tr this was our part of our ACL prevention. Not saying that we're not addressing those components during this training session, but it also, for me, I think I feel better about it if I'm able to do some of these. So as you can see, and if you ever have any questions, you know, make sure you comment on the article and ask, say, okay, and we'll try to make sure that if we don't have all these on our exercise index, we're going to get them on there. So as you can see, again, some of these are a little more difficult than others. You know, having a strap, you know, with your heel in there, bridge and curl, uh, and a, you know, a basically an assisted 
pistol with a row uh, is something that you know we basically quarter squat that just working on that VMO or working on that abduction and that glute work is really important so as you can see when you look at it if you just have a, a fifth of your athletes just have a mini band they can go through and all of a sudden I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you know use a neck harness and do extension, I'm doing my band pull parts, I keep going through the workout, I do my overhead pal my pal my X walks, monster walks, and then the uh, basically the, the, the feet on the bench, hands on the floor uh, extensions that we uh, got from Julia Leduski. Uh, that is, you know, one of those, they can go through those components very quickly. They don't have to exchange uh, equipment, they don't have to move anywhere. Uh, heck, you can just, I mean, you're really with a, with a light band, either have it attached to the rack high, attached to the rack low for TAKEs, or you take it off and do some abduction. So they just have that orange band and they do all their components of that, of that you know, that, that movement prep all with that band and then, you know, you can move on. So um, that's pretty much what we're talking about. Last thing is our Olympic lift warm up. And again, I'm not saying that you need to do Olympic lifts, but um, again, gaining in popularity. My thought is anytime you can have the athlete pause uh, the movement, it helps you as a coach because you can see it and it helps the athlete because they can feel it and they can make corrections uh, from a tactile sense uh, as well for, with those cues. So really what we did was with empty bar, we had a snatch complex and a clean grip complex depending on what we had that day. And again, depending on the, the, the different, and this is 90% of the weight we had that day. So that could be 90% of 80%, you know what I mean? So. That just that just depended, but again, what we would do is we would make sure that we would just do a uh, an overhead squat complex with the snatch, overhead squat combo. The difference is uh, complex would be uh, three snatches, three overhead squats. A combo would be maybe if, five, if three is your number, snatch overhead squat, snatch overhead squat, snatch overhead squat. We didn't full catch a lot of things because from the athletic you know background, we we would catch from the power position most of the time, but that still was a great way to, again, add some squats on a non-squat day if we were snatching or doing cleans on a non-squat day. So that's, that's kind of what we like. Uh, and then we would get into that five position German snatch. Uh, Cam Davidson did an outstanding video on our site about that. Uh, and then again, that last, we would always pause. So when we would pause, we would pause at the start position. So if it's from the floor below knee, if we're going from the hang above knee, but that's our start, that's where we pause. So either halting clean or uh, what we call pause clean or halting snatch or a pause snatch. And then the athlete would also pause at the catch position, which for us, and you get that high school kid or the college kid that they're doing a jumping jack to catch it underneath or they catch it way down low. Again, we want to try to just get the athlete uh, to really feel that position and make sure that they're comfortable catching in that power position. So, and that's going to be up to your training philosophy. Same thing with the cleans. Uh, clean front squat complex, clean, clean front squat combo, three position uh, hang, which is going to be very similar to the, to, the, to, to the snatch, and then we would always clean with the pause, you know, depending on, on where we're at. So that's how we incorporate our warm-up sets were like that. So we use combos, complexes, circuits, and pauses within those warm-up sets. So by the time we got that at heavy weight, and again, some of your athletes that are moving some weight, they may need one more warm-up set where they can hit the movement at full speed. And again, that's going to be up to you as well, but that just gives you an idea. So uh, hopefully that helps with the, uh, with again what you do pre-lift and you know if you have any questions make sure you make sure you, you, you hit us up in the comment section of the article and uh, if, make sure you visit leadfts.com for all your uh, strength and conditioning needs thanks